all right guys welcome back to part 13 so we are finishing up the last mission that we started in part 12 which was basically going to go help Bo again so look at the progress before we continue 26 percent that's how far we are into this game just to let you guys know but let's jump right back into it let's go help him. all right come on Bo. what you got up So I think he was talking about women's suffrage, so and he might have to marry his cousin instead of his true love. So we gotta see what's going on. Calm down. I can't be calm. If we don't get there in time, my true love may be shot. If she wants to rally, you gotta let her rally. Well, good as the cause is, I can't let her become a martyr to it. I, I want to marry a flesh and blood woman. Not a statue in her honor. I'm sure they know what they're doing. There! There they are! Bo, what are you doing here? I cannot let you go through with this. You'll be killed! I'm prepared to die for the cause, Bo. You know that. Do something, please! What? Fight this mob? We must. They leave me alive. This is no laughing matter, sir. They need protecting from certain elements. Mostly my family. Penelope, I beg you. I'll tell you what. Your friend here can drive the wagon for us. It'll allow us to shout all the louder. Hooray! Sure. Miss Calhoun. Miss Calhoun. My friend here says he can drive the wagon. Well, Olive Calhoun. Normally I like to drive myself, but today I feel like a man joining us sends the right message. Well, I ain't never been in a <laughs> protest march before, madam. Well, just treat us like the sheep and the folks attacking us like the wolves, and I'm sure you'll feel right at home. Shall we go? <clears throat> All right, ladies. We know our song is a good one, mm -hmm. and we know our cause is a pure one. Yes, ma'am. Let liberty reign. Alrighty then. We're mothers, wives, housekeepers, and daughters. We cook the food and fetch the water. Take us down Main Street, right through town to the steps of the Bank of Road, Mr. What was your name? Arthur Morgan. Very good, Mr. Morgan. Not too quick, and not too slow. Well, they'll hear it all right. Tell me. Very good. Mr. Morgan, are you an old friend of the movement? I'm just a driver, Mrs. Calhoun. Maybe a shotgun messenger if it comes to it. I hope it won't. Uh, our message will be delivered peaceably, Mr. Morgan. You can keep your shotgun to yourself. Stay on Main Street. Uh, it's a left up here, Mr. Morgan. Look at these people. Oh, it's about to get exciting. I can feel it. I believe you might be right. Good day, Sheriff. I trust you'll make sure it's a peaceful assembly. Oh, do give it a rest, you sorry fool. Mr. Morgan, I give you the mail. Of the species. Yeah, that's a pretty dumb specimen, I grant it. Almost there. Take us just a little further, please. Nobody is agreeing with this. This spot is fine, sir. Ladies! Get down! Come on! 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 Well, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. well, this is a great day for all of us. Yeah. For today is the day we begin to live as equals. Equals! Ah. Yes, equal, sir. Fair and equal. This is unnatural. This is nonsense. Yeah. Fair, equal, and free, just as the Founding Fathers intended. Yeah. Yeah. Founding Fathers, oh. not Founding Mothers, you hey, silly old goat. <laughs> His philosophy hey. dependent on biology. What the hell are you doing here, boy? Keep your voice down. I'm trying to listen to the speech. Hello, darling cousin. Don't you ever speak to me like that. 
Ooh, what are you doing here? Listening, I suppose. Go help Bo. His cousin is a moron. And stop them from ruining the speech. You need to learn yourself some manners, cousin. Haven't you got anything better to do? Oh, you always were. Bo, why don't we just leave him? Well, who the hell is this? Follow me, Ron. Oh, uh, what? You'll hit me? Oh, Come on. Sir, can you not see how idiotic you trouble. are? Come on, Bo. Let's go. Quick now. We gotta go before you can follow me. I know a place. It's an old battlefield no one goes to. America, but a land of the future. Oh, yeah, they're looking for trouble. We're about to go mount their horses. I was going to say, tell me why their speech made me think about that GTA 5 um, scene where Michael's um, auntie was over there chanting in the street. You hear the speeches? Where, um, I sisters. ain't voted before, but kind of getting hot for voting rights. I don't know whether to take you seriously, Mr. Morgan. My cousins are my primary concern right now. If everyone knows about Penelope and me... <sighs> everyone knows about Penelope and you... I know about Penelope and you, and I've been here all of ten minutes. The sooner it's out, the sooner it's resolved. The sooner it's dealt with, you mean. We're dealt with. Our families, the Greys and the Braithwaites, we bury our secrets, and we bury them deep. Your secrets and your treasure. You know, Catherine Braithwaite's got a daughter. No one's seen her in years. She weren't right. Now, and Penelope said, uh, I, I heard about daughters. I heard about gold. But Yankee gold? I fear that's just a story, Mr. Morgan. But I don't know. This is awful. Nobody died. It ain't that awful. My cousins are vindictive bastards. My brothers are vindictive bastards. My cousins are worse. They started it. I know. But you should leave. I will. As soon as I have enough money, when my family, we have money, but I don't. Is your family very rich? Yes. Well, I believe so. But uh, they keep me out of the discussions. I have more of a artistic temperament, so. Oh, is that what they call it? Yes. Oh, you made a joke. <clears throat> I really love her. I do. Well, stick around. Maybe you can die for her as well. I thought you were trying to make me feel better. <laughs> Look, I gotta go. Me too. Oh, damn! I'm gonna be late. My uncle is quite as bad as you would imagine. Uh, here, your payment. Thank you. I excuse me. Hopefully things work out for the best, man. Hopefully things work out for the best. Okay, well, on that note, we're gonna keep it moving. Yeah. So we have to return to camp because we got people that need us. So let's go back to camp. Okay, so we got the A, Abigail Roberts. Abigail needs to speak to me. And then who is this? Molly O'Shea. Molly needs to speak to you. Hmm, Abigail. Actually, we've been seeing the M for quite some time, so let's talk to Molly first. It's like they're all girls, though. But I've been seeing that in for quite some time, so I'm gonna talk to Molly first and then I'll talk to Abigail. But yeah, Bo, I hope things work out for him for the best. Because things are going really crazy for him. When the suffrage, his family being excluded, I hope things work out. Get on there, a minute of your time. Let's get us a closer look at this one here. Round here, strangers got a cough up payment. <laughs> I'm done being kind. Last warning. I have to say, right here, you. You about to make a donation to the cause, brother. Hands up.
I thought. And my horse over there pretending like nothing even happened. How's that for a donation? Yep. Alright, let's go. Yep. Back to camp. Before we so rudely were interrupted. suffrage i really wonder if like that's really how they did it back in the day like having a chance and like, go around and earn the fruit that's really how it had to be done i give them i i can't even explain it i'm just proud of them because they actually worked everything worked out for the best later on Ah, call me Molly, would you? Oh. Arthur, how is Dutch? I mean, how does he seem to you? I'm about the same as usual, I guess. I, I really love him, you know. But if he... Like he always says, loyalty is everything, so... Arthur! Excuse me, Miss O'Shea. What you want? I bring a gift. The great gift of information. So you got some tip off. So now I can yeah. risk my neck and make you some money while you lounge around. You know, Arthur, bitterness, it, it works on the inside as well as on your sour face. If you say so, but you could go find some other fool to run your errands. Bill, come on over here. Will you be my other fool? You too, Charles. What are you? Talking about. Arthur's above a little stick up I heard about. No, I'm not. <laughs> you just said. Yeah, I'll do it. As long as you ride with us. <laughs> well, I got a serious medical condition. <laughs> yes, you are a compulsive liar. Now, no need to be like that. Charles, have I ever lied to you? I hardly know you. Exactly. Now, you boys should do this. It, it's easy, and I'll only take a small commission for my information. But it's now or never. Then it's never. Oh, God help me. Fine, I'll do it. <laughs> well, what is it? It's a supply wagon carrying payroll, but very briefly unguarded, apparently. As it passes through a crossroads near here where there's an old ruined church, before it connects with the rest of the wagon train. Very easy picking. As long as we get paid or you get shot, I'm happy. You are a sick man, Arthur Morgan. A very sick man indeed. <sighs> Very blunt is more like it. <laughs> Come on, then, you miserable bastards. Yeah, you got a nice horse to argue with. Get wind of this old man. We only been down here all of five minutes. <laughs> well, while wow, you boys been off fishing or playing lawman or whatever the hell you've been doing, I've been getting down to business. <laughs> Finding the nearest grog house. Hey, you don't want in on this, Williamson. That's fine by me. Do us all a favor. Head home. Just give it a rest, you two. Just have a little faith for once, will you? I've been scoping jobs like this since you fellers were knee-high to a grasshopper. Once a decade, maybe. So what is it you scoped here exactly? Well, I told you. There's a wagon with a lockbox passes through every week. Hey! They switch outriders just north of here, but the front wagon's by itself for a stretch before the last run down in the roads. <laughs> okay, hold up here. We should cover our faces. Oh, they'll be past. Look at the crossroads up ahead. When? Soon, Williamson. Christ's sakes. I should be due any time now. Let's keep this quiet and clean. Nobody needs to die here. There! You see, gentlemen? <laughs> I 
just like clockwork. <laughs> uh, back to the outlaws. Back to Robin we go. Whoa! Stop the wagon! I said, stop the damn wagon! Whoa! Now, don't try anything stupid, and we won't do anything unkind. You know, boys, I, I don't, I don't want to get shot, but this is a mistake. I work for Cornwall Kerosene and Tar, uh. Mr. Leviticus Cornwall. Oh, great. So you know him? <laughs> Who doesn't? I hear he's rich enough to share the wealth around and not miss it too much. Oh, he'll miss it. Okay, why don't you check out around the back? Arthur, help me out here. <clears throat> Alright, let's see what we got. Let's see what's inside. Let's see what we got. Okay, we're looking good. Must be nearly a thousand here. Shit! Hey! Think I see something! Oh, great. Let's go! Arthur, let's go! Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. Woo! Why are you traveling pets? Why are you traveling pets? Come on! Sack. Stay until dark, and then we'll sneak out of here. Charles, you keep watch for now. Sure. Well, we uh, get some rest. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let's try and get out of here. Shit! Absolutely. Well, shut up, old man. Well, look, I was just trying to... Shut up. There's a light over by the house. Damn! Hey, now, let's just keep this calm. See what happens. Is this your place? Kinda. Uh, and you didn't hear nothing? I... Uh, uh... Let me go back I, to looking. Why don't you just tell me, partner, what you heard? I, I, tell me what you heard. I don't... Uh, maybe I, I heard some noises out by the barn a while ago. It ain't me. It better not be. All right. Oh, man. Coopforth. Lo, go check out the, the barn. Uh, sir. They're getting too close for comfort. Well, the 
place looks deserted enough. Sure. You head inside, I'll go around the back. Get down, get down, get down. You see anything? Not yet. Okay. Follow my lead. Bastard! Get the hell off me! What? Made a meal out of that, didn't you? Oh, just How did he get there, you? Why don't you? <laughs> Making an old man suffer.
We all still alive? Yeah, just about. Yeah, I'll deal with you later. Uh, we got some money, didn't we? Sure, but now we got corn on our backs. It was an honest mistake. Hey, leave it, Gwonk. Get out of here. Every man split up, Gwonk. Run, quick. Good luck, Johnson. Stay quiet and move. Insane. One simple little robbery rip <laughs> led to all of that. Goodness gracious. I think that was like one of the biggest heists we've had so far in this game. Thank goodness my horse wasn't that far away. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're heading right back to the camp. So let's see what we got. Who needs our help? Lenny? Oh yeah, I said we want to... Wait, what does Lenny need? Okay, we're gonna go see Abigail. I did promise that. All right, Abigail, let's go. Yeah. I did promise we gonna see her, but that one little heist led to all of that. Like, it was at least 50 guards that we had to deal with. That is insane. Wow, Leviticus does not play. I feel like he's gonna have to be the final boss of this whole game. He is not playing, especially about his money. So, I can't wait to see how this ends. Not wait. And we're only, I'll probably say we're only about like a third of the way done, if that. So we still have a long journey. I have to say, each time I play this game, it gets more and more fun every time. Whoa, steady, easy, fella. What cargo are you bringing through, through boy? here? Easy there. We're just looking for cargo here. We're trying to get these supplies to the federal building. It's on the knee. Federal ain't got. Boy, you best be going. Lamar Raider. Thank you for your help. Yep, no problem. No problem. As soon as he called me boy, I knew something was up. Like, come on. We get, we're talking like it's a man to man conversation. You gotta throw out the word boy. I knew something yeah. was up. I knew they couldn't be trusted. See what I think Abigail, I think that was her name. Let's see what she has to say. Hey, Arthur. What's going on? Jose and John are looking for you. They went out to the moonshine stash, said you knew where that was. They was planning a visit to the Braithwaite place, but John needs to do something for Dutch now, so Hosea wants you to join him instead. <sighs> Seems to be a lot going on. You're telling me. Okay, thank you. All right. Let's go take care of what Jose Let's got for us. Smiling, boys. Come on. Life is pretty good. A hundred years ago, we'd have been I'm not going to lie. Abigail was actually kind of beautiful. Okay. <laughs> but let's go on uh, uh Jose. See what he got up for us. Yep. Go. See what Jose got for us. Go, go. What are you doing? 
selling it back to where it came from. Why? I ain't got a market for it. They made it, they must have someone to sell it to. <clears throat> Stuff look kind of lonely out here. I think we'll cut ourselves a deal. Uh, I get you. You and Dutch was just doing your duty when you requisitioned it. Now I'm doing mine. All right. I should get going now. I'll leave you fellas to it. Good luck. Thank you, John. We'll see you later. Dutch asked him to look into something to do with the Braithwaite horses, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, let's head out to the Braithwaite's place. You know the way? Yeah, I've been there. So, what exactly are we doing? This is the moonshine we took after blowing up the Braithwaite still, right? I think the good citizens taking the trouble to return their stolen goods deserve some reward, don't you? Then it's time we made a formal introduction, like Dutch told us. Look, these are two big old plantation houses. All I keep hearing is they hate each other so much they can't see past it. I know. I've seen it. There's a gray boy and a Braithwaite girl carrying on a secret affair. I've been, well, helping them. The mind boggles. You think they're of use? Not sure. They don't seem too involved in the rest of it, but maybe. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? What's that in the back there? Moonshine, my fine fellow. May I have a word with the man of the house? The man of the house is a lady. Mrs. Catherine Braithwaite. May I speak with her? I want to discuss a business opportunity. I mean no harm. No harm at all. You may happily shoot me if I do. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, she's at the house. <laughs> of course he had to hitch a ride in the back. We'll be watching you. You heard the man. Driver, proceed, please. Of course he had to hitch a ride in the back. <laughs> We have like three other people following us. <laughs> uh. What you want? Found something out in the hills. Thought, thought maybe you was in the market for it. For what? Some liquor. I ain't in the market for what's already mine. The way we see it, it's ours. Well, with us possessing it, and I, I checked all over for the life of me, I couldn't see your name on it. Oh. Ooh, she Relax, is. I ain't here to rob you. Oh, it seems that's easy enough. <laughs> Wanna do a deal? What do you sell that stuff for? Dollar a bottle. You give us 50 cents. It's already ours. Well, look on it as a reward for finding the property. Alternative is we go sell it someplace else. The alternative <laughs> is you get shot. Now, who wants to get shot over a bottle or two of liquor? <laughs> Pay the man. Pleasure doing business with you. And listen, uh, we didn't take it. At least not without orders from... Oh, I know exactly who gave you your orders. Old Sheriff Gray. You know what? I don't want it. In fact, sir, now you can do me a favor. There's an extra ten bucks if you do. Drive the stuff into Rhodes, head over to the tavern run by Mr. Gray, and give the stuff out for free. Mama! Hush now. I believe they call that a promotional experience. <laughs> As you wish, madam. You boys come back sometime and tell me how you made out. Maybe we'll play a little cribbage. All right. Okay. Next stop, the road saloon. I am scared of that lady. Here we go. I'm 100% scared of that lady. So I finally sold those Cornwall bonds. Got close to a thousand for them. I wanted more, but not bad considering how hot they were, especially after that bloodbath in Valentine. No, not bad at all. Apparently, Cornwall's been pumping a lot of cash into the Pinkertons. Wants to keep their full effort on going after gangs. Gangs like us. Yeah, that don't surprise me. All right. This could get ugly. You and Dutch already have that thing going on Whoa. in town with 
the sheriff. Yeah, Mr. Gray. That's it. Now we're inserting ourselves in his blood feud. <laughs> we'll need something. I ain't playing dress up. You know my feelings about that. Of course you're not. You're... You're a clown's idiot brother. Jose, please. I'm the clown. You're the brother turned idiot. Just look sad and keep quiet. Even you can do that, Arthur. Oh, I have to. Put this hat on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He meant right Smoke now. this pipe. As long as you're not Bring your lip for just a bit. Or Squint. something weird. Oh. Like makeup. Hey, what about makeup you? Makeup. You can't speak. You're turned idiot. Oh. Right. Broke poor mammy's heart. Uh, there, there, oh. Benton. There, there. Don't get mad now. Well done, Arthur. You want me to drive? Yeah, because I have nothing, as long as it's nothing to do with makeup or anything. Because <laughs> then it'll really be bad and he'll really get teased. Okay, Benton, stay calm now. For Mama, she loved you so. <laughs> Just a shame you had to strangle her in a rage, right? Grab two cases of that stuff and follow me. <laughs> I swear, Arthur always gets dragged into the weirdest situations whether he wants to or not. I can see why he always is so reluctant. He Gentlemen. never wants to do this. Gentlemen! Quite the town you have here. We just rode in from up north. Hey. Hello. Hello, I'm Melvin. This is my brother Fenton. Don't mind him. Don't madden him. He's turned idiot. <laughs> Killed our mother, but it weren't his fault. How'd you boys... How'd you boys like a couple of oh, bucks? I bet you would. One for each of you. We're in the new trade of advertising, which is an American art form about ensuring people buy the correct things. I don't know. One more dollar. Says give us half an hour. What harm can we do in half an hour? <laughs> Go along now. Enjoy the money. Come along, Fenton. Let's hand out the liquor. Get behind the bar in the saloon. Okay. Gentlemen! Gentlemen! My name is Melvin. That's my brother Fenton. He's a bit funny, but boy, can he pour drinks fast. For the next 30 minutes, the drinks in this here bar, in this here town, are entirely free. Yeah. The only rule is that you gotta drink them. So hurry up, put old Fenton to work. Don't get him mad, though. His mama made him mad, and we buried her. The whole thing. Ah. Now come up to the bar, everybody. Come on, pull it. I'll have one, Fenton. Great. Again. Turned up. I think we're drunk. Gone. Hey, send a couple this way, will ya? Come on, keep him busy. You won't like him when he's bored. Oh, wife is gonna kill me. <laughs> I only went out for milk. What? Glad hit the spot. Keep him coming, Ben. <laughs> Just keep him coming. You, me, you're the bastard who stole the liquor we was gonna buy. Jump, 
We're in advertising. Uh, come on in and have a drink. That's our goddamn liquor. An honest mistake. Boys, get him. Oh, 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 no. oh, oh, man. Come on, man. me never to take up a career in, what was it advertising yeah you think that woman set us up no i don't think so maybe this place is odd yeah. i keep seeing those fellas some local militia clearly not too happy to have some new competition i'll go visit old my braithwaite see what's what why we've been making money the chest is filling up again slowly but surely Part of me thinks we just get ourselves good and lost. But we still need a lot more money before that can happen. So, for now, 
Let me go give old Mrs. Braithwaite some of this moonshine as, well, let's call it a peace offering. Sure. That was fun, Fenton. We'll make an actor of you yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go speak to Dutch. Well, that was interesting and very fun, <laughs> i tell you that. Anything so far that deals with luxury? So, what do fun. you think? About what? The fine folks around these parts. Oh, real nice. Exactly. On the one side, we have got the Gray family. Scots, degenerates, drunkards, the local law. You couldn't make this stuff up. Rich as Croesus. And on the other, their mortal enemies, the Braithwaites. Moonshiners, hypocritical, both rolling, we believe. In gold. And in the middle of it all, you got some inbred retailing of Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what you boys thinking? We try to rob them both. You sure? Why not? Because we got lawmen in three different states after us. Last thing I want is to get us into trouble, but we need money. Now, we have the opportunity here to put ourselves in the middle of something ain't nobody gonna know we was here. Because even without us, these fools are gonna kill each other okay, anyway. Okay, well, Jose's gone back to see that Braithwaite woman. Good. Jose should definitely take the lead on this. I sent Sean over to Braithwaite Manor, too. Now, you can meet up with them... Or join John and Javier at the Gray's place. Something to do with the Braithwaite's prize horses. Well, how the hell did we get in at the Gray's place? Sheriff Gray kindly put in a word with his father. It ain't that complicated. <laughs> we gotta convince each family that we're on their side. And then we rob them both. Before they figure out it was us that done it, and not the other lot, we'll be long gone. Think of it as payback for my daddy. Payback. I ain't in the revenge business, Dutch. Least of all for something happened a long time ago. Well, I guess we all gotta pay for something. Now, if you will excuse me, Arthur, I got to write a letter. Evil, evil man. Alright, guys, when we come back, we have a heck of a lot more missions to do. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. Love you guys. Hit that subscribe button. Drop a like. And peace.